Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Ann Reardon and you asked me to make another debunking video. Now I thought it's a new year. A lot of the channels we were looking at had some negative press last year. So maybe this year they will have turned over a new leaf and be doing some good quality content. So I thought I'd only look at the new stuff they've put up this year and see how we go. The first video that I looked at was this one, 15 of the most creative pie crust designs. Now it looks to me like this is just a repeat video of something I've seen before. Let me just go to their channel. Now if you go to any channel you can search on the channel. So we'll search for pie and yes. Look, they uploaded this exact video in September 2018 and it had 12 million views on it. So they've just re-uploaded the same thing. That's just amazing. I mean, the algorithm shows people what they want to watch. So people must want to watch this and then have it re-uploaded and watch it again, right? Well, if we look in the comments, it says the top comment with 90 likes, seeing a video thumbnail and thinking that's new content to watch. Watching the video, and thinking never mind. So they're not impressed. Followed by the second comment with 42 likes. Doesn't anyone get tired of watching the same thing? And then further down you've got Rifki says, I am so bored from the non-stop repetition. Is there no creativity left? Well, that's a good question for YouTube because it's their algorithm that is promoting all of these compilation and copycatting and repeating and it's their algorithm that keeps shoving it in people's faces. The problem is though, I guess that creativity takes time. It takes time to think of new things and develop new things. Whereas if you can just copy someone else's stuff, it's heaps quicker to do. And in fact, if you can just re-upload your old content again, that's even quicker again. So if they're going to reward that, that's what the YouTube platform is going to become basically. Next, lots of you sent me this video and yes, they did copy my recipe. Buzzfeed did it too. They copied it pretty much straight after the original video came out after I put it up. What I think is funny about these ones is when I invented it, I spent so long experimenting with all different methods trying to figure out how I could make this work. And I finally got it to work in a way that I thought was able to be repeated by everyone else. And then I had these sugar bowls and I'm like, what am I going to put in them for the final shots in the video? And I just had some ice cream and some fruit in the fridge. So I quickly chuck that in the bowl and as I was editing I was like oh, I wish I had have had something nicer that I could have put in the bowls for the final shot and all these copycat ones all put ice cream and fruit in the bowl exactly the same as what I did I didn't even improve on it I didn't add any creativity to it just kept it the same. Okay let's look at some actual recipes this is a so yummy one they have sweetened condensed milk in the microwave for 10 minutes and we have easy caramel. Nope, this is not going to work. I can guarantee you this is not going to work. Well, we'll try it out anyway. Take some sweetened condensed milk, struggle to get the lid off, tip it into the exact same jug that they used in their video and microwave that for 10 minutes. Mm. Why are debunking videos always such a mess? Look, it's bubbled and boiled over everywhere and I can hear it popping and banging and it's still got five minutes to go. I'm going to have to stop it there. I don't think that another five minutes will make any improvement to the outcome here. Whew, that's a waft of smoky steam. Now because they copy each other, of course, Five Minute Crafts also has a sweetened condensed milk recipe, but theirs has a slight twist to it. If you have a look, they put their sweetened condensed milk in a bowl, but then they put that bowl inside a bowl of water, and then they put it in the microwave for eight minutes, and you get caramel and water that are clearly not even hot because you can just grab the bowl straight out of the microwave. But to be fair, we should try this method too. We have a bowl, add the sweetened condensed milk, put that into there. Well, at least that should keep my microwave clean. And put that into the microwave for eight minutes this time. 
Now a water bath in a normal oven ensures that there's even heating and that's because the water itself doesn't go over 100 degrees and it stops the outside of the bowl that the food is in from getting really hot from the oven because it's just kind of keeping that steady temperature. But microwaves heat very differently to a conventional oven. So I don't think it's gonna have the same effect but we'll just watch and see what happens. Nope, that sweetened condensed milk is bubbling right up. It's going out of the bowl and into the water. Well, at least my microwave is staying clean this time. Hmm, I spoke too soon. Man, I've got to clean the whole microwave again now. All right, at eight minutes, we have burnt sweetened condensed milk. Now, believe it or not, you can actually make caramel using sweetened condensed milk in the microwave. I don't really like the taste of it, but just in case you wanted to know how to make it, this is how you do it. First of all, you take a bowl that is big enough that it's not gonna boil over. Tip the sweetened condensed milk into the bowl, put it in the microwave, and microwave it for one minute. Now take it out and stir it, because microwaves heat really unevenly, so stirring all the way through is very important. Then microwave that for 30 seconds this time, and stir it. 30 seconds and stir it and do that a whole bunch of times so as you can see it doesn't really look super easy or super quick anymore to make caramel in the microwave and it doesn't really go with the nice jaunty music. Moving on now to 15 lazy girl hacks that actually work by Blossom. How did she not react to the taste of ink in her mouth? And why did she just let it dribble down onto her shirt as if she didn't know what was going on? This reminds me of the time that Link tried to consume edible printer ink. You know, the, the ink that you use to print out onto the sheets of fondant to go on top of cakes. So it's, it's non-toxic, but you're not really just supposed to eat it in bulk. But he ate some of it thinking it was okay to eat. You get any? Oh, God. <laughs> 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 it is not edible. And now, see, that I think is a normal reaction. Anyway, she gets the ink and wipes it off effortlessly off her face and then gets her shirt and puts it in a bowl of milk and the ink floats. You wash the shirt and it's as good as new. Well, what do you think? This actually works according to the title, so let's give it a go. I'll add some black pen ink onto the shirt, then pour myself a bowl of milk and put the shirt in. And look, the ink floats like magic and I can just put it on the back of the spoon and take it out. And once I've taken out all the floating ink, I can lift up the shirt and you can see it's still covered in ink. So yes, some of the ink floated, but the rest is stuck to the t-shirt and doesn't come off even when you wash it. This next So Yummy one was sent to me by Alexander. Thank you for sending this one in. It says start the year simply with these delicious two ingredient recipes. Now, first of all, the first recipe in this had three ingredients, but I'm just gonna skip by that and let that one go. We're gonna move right on to almond butter cookies. It has almond butter, add an egg, stir it up, put it on the trays, and you make two ingredient almond butter cookies. Interesting. Can you see a problem with this recipe? That I can see a problem straight away. Well, what we'll do is we'll make them so that you can see what happens. So there are two different types of almond butter. There are ones like this that has multiple ingredients in it, like vegetable oil, maltodextrin, almonds are only 23% there, milk solids, sugar, so lots of other things in there. By comparison, this one is 100% almonds with nothing else added in. Now, the one in their video was by Wholesome Pantry, and we know that because they clearly showed it to us. And now let me look up that brand because I can't get it here. 
it says it has two ingredients only, almonds and sea salt. So it's pretty much 100% almonds, so it's like the macro one, so I'll use that one. Add an egg to the jar. <laughs> that doesn't fit at all, does it? Okay, I've just tipped out that egg and got a new one, and I'm going to put all of that almond paste into the bowl and stir it in a bowl. I know they like to keep it all looking simple by doing it in the jar, but it's actually much easier to do it in a bowl. Stir it in, and it's gone the same texture as theirs did, so it's looking the same so far. And then I'm gonna put it back in the jar so I can get that shot that they did. Then crisscross that with a fork, and it's time to bake them. Biscuits or cookies? Mm. Mm. It tastes like sand. <laughs> if you search up an almond butter cookie recipe, you'll see that they are typically three ingredients, not two. Scroll down to the ingredients here and they're supposed to have six tablespoons of sugar in them for every one cup of almond butter. Even then I imagine these would still be pretty dry. Just wait. Water. Yes. <laughs> Next in the same video, they have a Greek yogurt bread. So they have Greek yogurt and flour and mix it together in a food processor. Then roll out the dough, cut it a few times, bake it in the oven and look, it rises right up into a beautiful, easy bread. Now I'll get back to the recipe side of that in a minute, but did you notice, first of all, the brand of the yogurt then? It was Wholesome Pantry, again. Surely this video must be sponsored for two clear product shots by the same brand, which I haven't seen any disclosure for yet, but if I go right to the very end of the video, it does say, with ShopRite. And is that enough disclosure? Hi, I'm Amber Lee, an attorney at the Federal Trade Commission. Tell people about your brand relationship along with your endorsement. Put it early in the message or superimposed prominently on the picture. Again, make sure to put your disclosure where people can't miss it. That is a whole different issue. So we're just gonna skip over that one and go back to the recipe. I wanna try this one. I'll get some Greek yogurt. I'm not using Wholesome Pantry because I don't have that brand here. And this whole video is hashtag not sponsored. So we'll put that in the food processor. It seems easy so far. Shape it into a roll, give it a few cuts, and put it on a tray. And now bake that in the oven. For comparison purposes, I've actually pre-prepared a normal dough for bread, which has yeast in it, as well as the flour, a little bit of sugar so the yeast can feed on that, and some other ingredients in there as well that you normally have to make bread. Now I'm just gonna weigh out a piece that is the exact same weight as the Greek yogurt bread so that we can do a side-by-side -side comparison of them baking in the oven. I'll give that one three cuts too and now we can bake them. The one on the left is normal bread dough and the one on the right is the Greek yogurt bread dough. The normal one rises and expands as you would imagine as the yeast ferments the sugar and creates bubbles inside. The yogurt one has no yeast and no raising agents and we didn't need it so we haven't developed the gluten in the dough so it doesn't rise much at all. Now compare that to the one in their video. If we rewatch that one baking in the oven, it actually rose quite a lot for a dough that had no way of rising. Let's have a look what it actually looks like inside. If we give that a break, gosh, that's hard to break. It's not bread texture at all. It's more like a solid lump of, I don't know, pastry maybe. I'm not even sure how to describe this. Okay, let's compare that one to the actual loaf of bread. Put that one back together. Now remember, these are the same weight. This weighs the same as this. This one is light and airy and fluffy, and this one is solid. Now if I break this one in two, just rip that in half so that you can see inside. That looks like bread. You can see there are air holes from the bubbles made by the yeast. And by comparison, this other one has no bubbles. It's just solid. But let's get Dave to taste test this one too. He's such a good sport. <laughs> I can tell already this one is heavy. This is, this is lead bread. This is heavy. Whoa. Mmm. 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 <laughs> mmm. 
it, uh, it's it's sort of a little bit I think it's meant to be like a sourdough but uh, it's not really a bread texture it's more just like play-doh texture probably not meant to eat it I've got a bunch more recipes here. There's so much more I want to discuss with you, but to be honest, I have to be on a flight in a few hours. I haven't even started packing. It's one in the morning. The rest of my family is asleep in bed and I've just got to call it a day for today. But let me know in the comments if there's other videos or tweet them to me if there's other videos you want me to look at as well. And I'll do some more debunking videos once I get back and get a bit of a chance. I just want to say thanks to my patrons for all of your support. You guys are amazing and make these videos even possible in the first place. Thank you also to all my subscribers. Make sure you do click on the bell and then click on all notifications. Otherwise, YouTube won't let you know when I upload a new video. So make sure you do that and you can watch more debunking videos here. Make it a great week and I'll see you guys next Friday.